Good afternoon, Facebook. Good morning for the folks that are on the West Coast. Uh, this is Mike Rahman here from the Be Our Guest podcast, Daily uh, Disney Break Daily. Still can't say that right. Here on Thursday, August 17th, 2017. We're going to be doing a trip report for a future podcast episode here very soon. So hopefully you're having a great Thursday. And we're going to talk some Disneyland with my buddy, Justin. So we're getting ready to record the podcast for a future date. Justin, how's it going down in North Carolina? Nice. A little hot, a little humid, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's blazing hot here in St. Louis again. We got we got a dose of like 75 degree weather there for about three or four days. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And now it's back to being just miserable again. So, yeah, we got that too when we were in Disneyland. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about today. I can't wait to, to hear all about it. So, uh, so the folks that are tuning in for the daily, uh, Scott's there, Mallory's there. What's up, guys? Uh, we're just going to, and Scott's a big Disneyland fan, so he's going to love this. Um, so we're just going to do a you know, 30 minute show. This is going to be our Labor Day show for in a couple of Mondays. So, uh, you know, watch it today and then make sure you got a pinky. Pinky swear you're going to download it on Labor Day. Come on, Absolutely. our numbers go down. Our, yeah, numbers go down on Labor Day. People aren't going to work. Tuesdays are always good after holidays, but make sure you download it anyway. We're going to kind of talk Disneyland. All right, so let's get rolling here. Episode 1219. So here we go. Welcome to episode 1219 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rahman from Be Our Guest Podcast.com and MagicalMouseRadio.com. Happy Monday to you. Happy Labor Day here in the United States. Hopefully you're having a great day. Relax and maybe you got the day off. If you're like me, you're probably still working, but it's okay. I'm living the dream. I can't complain. Hopefully you are as well. Today, we're going to have a fun trip report. We're going to talk Disneyland. We're going to head out to the West Coast where it's probably hot where you are today, but apparently in Disneyland, the temperatures are always beautiful and no humidity, which would be amazing around these parts. So joining me today from down in North Carolina, we have my friend, Justin. Justin, how's it going today? Going great. You know, here excited to talk a little Disneyland with you guys. Glad to have you. Now, you were at Disneyland while we were doing our, we were laboring, speaking of Labor Day, the 12-hour live show for Give Kids the World. And you gave us a holler from uh, from out there during the show. So uh, good planning there. We, we got a chance to talk Disneyland. And actually, I think we answered a question about dining live on the air that day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I planned that perfectly. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, you guys, you know, I guess, of course, it was my first time down there. So I knew very little. So I figured perfect time, ask a question and you know get it answered on air all right so let's go back to this year i would imagine that first time at disneyland but you're on the east coast of north carolina so are you a walt disney world veteran yeah i'm originally born and raised in orlando so i grew up in disney world you know and you know the, the exciting thing about disneyland was i have no first at disney world anymore because i've always remembered disney world you know because it's been with me my whole life so this is something that I've been planning for a while now. So that's, that was the, uh, the idea. All right. So before we hop into the trip, I'm curious about that. I love learning more about folks that listen to the show. So you are from Orlando. What's that like, you know, having, cause I'd imagine Disney inundates your life when you're down there, you know, it's just like, I don't know, like Cardinal baseball here in St. Louis. You just hear about it. You grow up with it. You know, your first shirt's a Cardinal shirt. Well, what's that like growing up uh, that close to, to Walt Disney world? Well, it's interesting because I'm I'm actually from the Space Coast, uh, where this where the Space Center is, and my whole family, everybody where I'm from, works at the Space Center. So, um, one of the cool things back in the day was when you worked at Kennedy Space Center, you got they had special parties and stuff like that. So it was actually really inexpensive to go, and we didn't grow up with a lot of money, so that was our entertainment. So, um, and, and it was funny, you know, when you grow up near there, you have a camp of people that love it and a camp of people who are kind of against it. So, um, cause they, they are afraid that everything becomes Disney fied, but I, I always loved it. And it was just, whenever I talk about some of my childhood memories, 90% of them involve some form of Disney. So I can imagine that's so cool. Now I also love the space coast. Don't get me wrong, man. I love that's my dream is to retire to Florida someday, but I think I want to live in Titusville. I think that's where I want to be. Probably that's in, in, I'm, in, born in, I'm really Titus, Titusville. Yes. <laughs> How about you've been to Dixie crossroads? I, I'm yes, sure, I'm sure. I, I was at Dixie crossroads when nobody liked it and they had to go through. <laughs> the change. 
So yes, <laughs> yeah, get some rock shrimp and uh, yes. and uh, yeah. it's good stuff. I love this. All right, so anyway, so you're comfortable with Walt Disney World. Obviously, it's part of your life. So how do you go about? Because you're gonna, I like this because I'm gonna be in your shoes. I know Walt Disney World like the back of my hand, but never been to Disneyland. So how does the planning go for that? What what gets you decide now's the time to go? Um. <sighs> That's a great question. I kind of just decided, you know, well, we were originally going to do an, a Los Angeles trip and planning and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, to be honest with you, I don't really want to go to Los Angeles. I want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> so, so we changed the trip from a few days into uh, to Disneyland. And then we went up to San Francisco for a few days because my sister lives there. So I was like, I, I you know, I, I lived in New York for 11 years. So it was like, I don't really care. I, I'm, the big city doesn't do anything for me. I just want to go to Disneyland. So that's kind of how that changed. And I was like, well, this met, no better time than now. Let's let's go and do it. Let's, let's hit the let's hit the West Coast. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to cut you loose because if you said you went out there because you wanted to see some Rams football, you know, preseason stuff, I'd have been like, you're out of here. You know, let's <laughs> let's get save yourself. Uh, no. right. So you guys, obviously, you want the full Disney experience. You stayed at the Disneyland Hotel. So how did you decide? you know, this is where we're going to stay because there's lots of good neighbor options. We got the three, you know, Disney owned hotels. Uh, how, how did you land at that, that particular place? The Disneyland hotel to me was the place I always wanted to stay. Um, it's a little pricey. You know, I looked at the grand Californian, which, you know, is, is the newer, but I it was just, that was the place I wanted to stay. Um, we looked at good name. In fact, it was funny because we were going to only stay at Disneyland Hotel for two nights and then stay at good, a good neighbor hotel for two nights. But when I was looking at the prices, and don't get me wrong, it, it's considerably different, but the good neighbor hotels weren't as inexpensive as I was thinking they would be. So I just decided, you know what? This is our vacation. You know, you always say, oh, this will probably be the, the only time I go, which coming back, I know that's just not going to be the case. <laughs> You know, but it won't be to this to this scale. But I just figured, you know what? Let's if we're gonna do it, let's do it right. And we decided all four nights there, and you know, this is where I wanted to do. I saved up for it. Let's do it. That's good. That's a good point. You know, you just you don't want to have any regrets. You know, I think that's the whole thing is that you're always trying to save money. I mean, I've, obviously, I don't have a ton of money either, so I'm always looking for that value. If I'm gonna spend it and gonna save and maybe do without a few things for a few months leading up to a vacation. I want to make sure that I see value out of that money I'm spending. And it sounds like, well, looking back before we dive into all the details, do you think you got a good value? I mean, what, any regrets uh, going with that decision? No, no, not at all. I mean, I will say when we did go to, uh, when we checked out the Grand California, I was like, oh, this, this is pretty nice. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, not at all. Um, it, it, I definitely felt I don't know. It, it's, it, you know, it's hard to, to, to describe, but I think as Disney fans, we get the whole, you, you feel that nostalgia, you feel that, that history. And it was definitely there. And, you know, and, and, and my wife, who's not as big of a Disney fan as I, she's kind of, you know, Disney by marriage. She, I think she really enjoyed it too. And of course my daughter did as well. So I, I no regrets, especially seeing her, my, my daughter's face and her excitement. No regrets at all. How, how old was your daughter? She's nine. Oh, perfect age. My daughter's nine as well. Yeah. You know, well, the good times are bad times, but mostly for vacations are a lot of fun. <laughs> Girls can be crazy. Um, so, uh, let me ask you this before we get into all the, the details of trips. I want to hear about this planning. Obviously planning is not as intense typically for a Disneyland vacation as compared to Walt Disney world, but there's still a lot to do. So how did you uh, attack that? Yeah, it's funny. I, I'm an intense planner. Um, so it was really weird not going, you know, not making fast pass plus reservations, things like that. I, I I'll be honest with you, I was a little stressed out. It's like, you know, I remember the legacy fast pass, but it's like, you know, and then of course Max Pass was coming. So, um, but I honestly, I had my reservations booked way far in advance, probably farther than I needed to. Um, I watched a ton of videos, um, you know, like it, it and. I, be, I got into this whole Disney World versus Disneyland thing. It's like, it, 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 you know, so I it was just a lot of videos, a lot of, you know, listening to different podcasts, listening, you know, just researching, reading. Um, and, and to be honest, when I got back, I was empty. It's like, 
what do I do? I have nothing to plan for now. So, um, but I, you know, I, I, but I do like, I think like most of us, the, the planning is to me, it's part of the trip. So I, it was great for the first time and, and like reading the differences. Oh, should I go on Soren? Is it the exact same? Is it not the exact same? And things like that. So, um, yeah, it, it, sometimes you get back from a big vacation and it's like you don't realize, but basically you took on another part time job preparing for the trip. You know, I think that's exactly what we all feel. That, that's funny. So tell us about travel out there. Was it was it difficult, you know, going from East Coast to West Coast? Any tips from uh, just getting there for our folks listening on the East Coast? Yeah, I mean, we flew into Los Angeles, uh, LAX, which I, if I did, and, and, and to be honest, we did that because it was a little cheaper. Um, I think if I did it again, I would go into Anaheim, uh, I think John Wayne. Um, it's just, it's just a little closer. Um, it, it's a long flight. However you slice it, it's five and a half hours, which, you know, I mean, luckily we had good weather and have any delays. So, you know, the, the time is the time, but I think generally speaking, if I could, I would fly, I would fly into to Anaheim as, as opposed to LAX. Good tip. Yeah, a lot of our lizards are heading out that way for this weekend for the Disneyland half. So uh, good luck if I don't remind you at the end. Good luck. Lizards run well and have fun. So um, you arrive and you've been looking forward to this. You know, everything is new. There's, there's just something to be said for like eyes wide open. Everything's going to be a new experience. What's that, you know, first couple hours like when you get there? Well, it's funny because, I, you know, reading up, you know, transportation, for, you know, it's not like in Disney World where you have the Magical Express. They have the, I, I think it's called the Disneyland Resort Express, um, which is run by a different company. So, uh, you know, we're waiting for that. And it, there's no clear signs like, you know, in, in you know, Orlando International, you go down here, you know, like it's it, it's telling you where to go. So we're like, we're not sure. We're not sure. We're waiting. And honestly, it didn't take that long. We got on the bus and we're we're, we're driving. And, you know, my first thought is the traffic isn't so bad here in LA. But of, of course it was a Sunday afternoon, you know, and being from New York, you know, you know living in New York is like, oh, traffic is much worse in New York. You know, we'll revisit that when we're heading back to the airport, which was a different story. But um, we get there and it's funny because the bus has to wait through the parking like everybody else does. So it, it took about 10, 15 minutes to get through, you know, the, the parking gate. And I'm like, it's like, of course, you know, so I'm like, right, let's get through. And then you see the Disneyland hotel and you're getting out and you walk in and you're just like, we've made it. We're finally here. And, um, you know, we, we, we go into our room and we're just like, yeah, what do I do first? You know, it's like, it's like all that planning I did, everything I, I, I mean, I had, I had sheets, I had charts, you know, I had my touring plans. So I was like, what do we do? So, and of course our, our answer was let's go eat. <laughs> so so you see, how'd you kick it off? What'd you have? Uh, we went to Tangaroa Terrace. That was our, our first meal. It was on my list. Um, uh, and it was good. I, you know, I had the, the tuna poke. My wife and, and I and my family, we're, we're pretty adventurous eaters. Um, my, my, my daughter is an adventurous eater. She just doesn't eat a lot. Um, and so, yeah, and then sometimes for some reason she goes for these weirdly really healthy meals and it's like okay you sure that's what you want because i'm thinking of because i know you're not going to eat it and i want to be able to finish it you know so yeah, exactly right. spoken that, that's how i look at it i'm like oh yeah mallory order that because you know you're only going to eat a quarter of that and that way i'll have a second meal <laughs> and the funny thing with her is she doesn't like dessert i mean sometimes i don't know if she's our our, our child or not she doesn't like dessert so whenever they ask you know you know, what do you want for dessert? She goes, oh, I'll just have fruit. I'm like, no, order this. You're not going to eat it anyways. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. But um, yeah. Was- so yeah, my, my only connection to Disneyland is like, I listened to a lot of uh, Nate and Matt talking about the history of Disneyland on Wedway Radio and, you know, uh, the, you know, the 3028 Matt's dealing with Kevin, you know, talking about DCA and, and its history and its updates and so forth. So I just have this hunger to see all these things. I mean, I feel like I know them, like they're, you know, they're like old friends and I've never been there yet. So did you kind of feel like that? Because you're a Disney fan. So, you know, all the, like history, right. you know, like this and that. And now it's like, oh, there it is right in front of me. Absolutely. That's what it's like. It's almost like, you know, and I, and I like it. And I said this to my wife, it's almost like seeing a celebrity down the street. 
you're like, oh, look, it's, you know, it's, it's so-and-so. And so you're like, oh, this like, we're going to go eat there. And then tomorrow, you know, so, you know, like, I'm going to order. And, and Tangaroa Terrace is very similar to Captain Cook's. Um, that, you know, that's kind of what I like and do. It's like, all right, I'm going to get this and you're going to get this and we're going to share this. And, you know, and, and my wife's like, whatever you want, just, you know, she just, she, a lot of it is just humor me, you know, so, but that, that's how it was. And then, you know, after we ate, we decided to go to the pool and there's the Disneyland monorail slide. And I, I don't know, like, you know, I'm sitting here geeking out about it. And my wife is probably just like rolling her eyes. Like it's, it's a pool slide. We have a pool at home. What's, what's the big deal? It's like, but that's the monorail slide. So. Your wife sounds a lot like mine. She loves her vacations. She loves going to Walt Disney World. She loves going on the cruises and stuff, but she puts off of my Disney geekdom. You know, like she's, okay, that, that's cool. I, I see that you're very, very excited about that. I don't really understand why you're that excited over that particular, you know, flagpole or that particular, uh, you know, street sign or something, but she tolerates me. I can't say much more than that. Exactly. Yeah. And I told her, I think, I think you're most excited to be here because I won't be talking about it for the next <laughs> six months. I won't be telling you, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this. So, yeah. Good point. Good point. So walk us through the rest of the trip. You know, you were obviously Walt Disney World vacations tend to skew longer than Disneyland. So I'm sure that you were pretty much on the go the whole time. Yeah. So, you know, after we, you know, we decided on that Sunday, we, we, we weren't going to the park on that Sunday. We had, we had three day park hopper passes uh, for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, so we went down downtown Disney and, you know, that's what we did on Sunday. Um, we decided to come back and get some rest because one of the things I read about when you go to Disneyland is, you know, it, and I, you know, going to touring plans, they were all nine and 10 out of 10 days. So, but they said, if you get there in the morning, you know, in you're, you're pretty good. So that our plan was to get up at the, you know, crack on, which was the good thing about it was 6 a.m. Their time is 9 a.m. Our time. So I was, you know, <laughs> so that, that helped out. Um, so we were up, you know, that, that next day, um, when you stay at one of the Disneyland resorts, you get extra magic out early morning hours every morning. So, and on Monday it was for DCA. So our first day was at, at DCA and we were there about six 30. We were one of the first people in line. And, you know, that was, that was kind of our plan going through each morning. And then of course we would take a break and go, you know, then take a nap and, and all that good stuff. And then I will say this, it was hot and relatively humid for you know f from what i gather because a lot of people a lot of locals were saying oh man it's usually not this hot and humid here so um so we, we didn't get the, the weather was wasn't that bad especially that first day on that monday the, the weather was actually pretty nice it was warm but it wasn't too humid but tuesday and wednesday it was it was, it was pretty 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 hot I, so I'll, I'll take my uh my chances with uh you know, Southern California humidity over St. Louis and Florida humidity. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. Well, I, I was, I was, because people that were complaining, I'm like, if you were at Disney World right now, you, you would have been just like, no, we're just, let's just end the trip now. So, so yeah. But, uh, so it shocks me though that you went to DCA first. Like, did you feel like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm at Disneyland and I'm going to DCA first? That shocks me. That, yes. I, that's exactly kind of what I was like, oh man, how does this work? But, <laughs> Because of the early morning hours being on, on that Monday, I was like, all right, we'll go there first. Um, and then, you know, when we come back in the afternoon, we'll head over to Disneyland. And, and two, you know what? I It actually worked out because I could get, I, you know, I could walk for the first time through Disneyland with like a crap, like with, with a bustling on Main Street and just, you know, instead of just like running to get to a ride. You know, so there was no hurry when we went back because it was like, it was already packed. So let's just take it all in. So that's that kind of say that, but yeah, you, you, I was, that was kind of where I was going at when I found out that the, that Monday we would go, we would be doing DCA first. I was like, oh, that's kind of anticlimactic, but we'll go with it. <laughs> so, so what did you uh, overall, like with, with DCA, you know, all, you know, you, you know, it, it opened, it had some struggles. They put all this money into it, you know, did that big refurb. It's, you know, it's definitely awesome now from everybody that goes out there, rave reviews. What's your overall impression of, of that park? And were there any things that our audience maybe hasn't heard on other shows that, that you discovered that um, might make their vacation better? Yeah, you know, I don't, uh, it was, it's interesting to me. I, I like DCA. Um, it's, it, I, I, I kind of, I'm one of the Disney fans that, you know, I don't, I don't put a lot of stock in like 
people's what people say and things like that. I like to experience for myself. So I try not to have too many, you know, preconceived notions going in. I will say this Cars Land is amazing. And if, you know, I always hear the rumors that they may be bringing that to Disney World. I hope so. Cause for me, it was worth a trip just to go there. The, just what they seen. I haven't got to see Pandora yet or any of that stuff yet. So, um, it's it's amazing and and radiator racer springs right yeah uh, radiator springs racers was great so i mean to me just that alone makes dca worth it um but it's fun i i, I really enjoyed it um it, it has a feel that none of the other parks that i've been to have you know and when we talk about disneyland it, it, it's kind of like an old friend that you you haven't met yet but dca is i can't Compare it to anything in Disney World. I can't compare it to Animal Kingdom. I mean, I guess it would be closest to to the to the studios, but even then, it does. It's so. I think the good the thing that I found that I like the most about DCA is not not really knowing much. I mean, I know what I've read and what I've seen, but but not being able to compare it to anything else. Yeah, and I think that's kind of how I feel about it too. It just seems like it's its own thing now. You know, it doesn't like you said. Disneyland's gonna feel kind of like the magic kingdom obviously not there's gonna be so many differences and you know it's got such a more rich story to it as far as history so let's talk about disneyland so you get over there finally you you've made it what what's the feel what's the vibe you know it's funny disneyland is i i that's what i told my wife and she of course she called me dramatic but it's like to me coming into disneyland is like being in a dream in the sense that you know it but it's not exactly because it's, you know, the, so it's, it's smaller, it's more intimate. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, I was talking with my, my wife and daughter before it comes like, well, what do you like better? Of course, of course, that's, you know, it's like Disney World will always be my heart, but there's just something about Disneyland. I, I don't know. It's, it's almost like you can feel, like I said it before, you can feel the history. It's almost like you're walking with Walt down Main Street. And and it's, it, it, it's something, I, I don't know, like, that it's hard to explain, but it's just that feeling of nostalgia. But it's also it's also fresh, and there's a there's a vibe there that is a little different than Disney World, um, and and like that that it's not it's not a tourist destination in in the sense that Disney World as much. But there's just you know it's it's that feeling you get of I've been here before, but I haven't because you know some things and and. and 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 but you don't it's like oh, if i turn here oh no that's not that's not the right way i gotta go around so that's interesting so now obviously you did all this research just like you know i have and and it makes me just happy to learn the history and to hear the stories because you know that's that's where it all unfolded and then they kind of copied that model obviously when they when they did florida and you didn't have kind of the first hand not as many you know walt obviously wasn't involved as much obviously with florida he just had the giraffes and stuff he didn't you know, walk the grounds and so forth. So you mentioned you felt that, but were there any things that, that jumped out at you? Like, man, I'd done all this research for months and months and months. And yet, you know, this kind of surprised me when I turned this corner or this was something I totally wasn't expecting to feel. The intimacy of the park. I think that's what I wasn't expecting. Um, I mean, you read it and people say it's smaller and stuff like that, but it's, it, it, it really is a more intimate park. Um, and I, you know, I, I knew it, I knew my head knew it, but I don't, I don't think I was expecting that. And like, you know, Sleeping Beauty's castle is not the the big castle that, that Cinderella's castle is, but you get to walk through it where you can't really walk through, can't walk through Cinderella's castle anymore. I remember when you could do that. So it's, 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 you know, it's, but that, that, that smallness, but even in that smallness, I don't feel that. You know, every inch of it, I think they've they've maximized. So um, I guess yeah. I guess I've had to learn over the years they have to. You right. know, when you only when you're you know constrained like that. So let me ask you. So as far as attraction shows, stuff like that, what were your highlights? Especially knowing that you're a Walt Disney World veteran, what were the things like? When I go back, this is what I I can't wait to do. You know, these few things. Um, well, I want to. You know the. Radiator, Spr Radiator Springs Racers at night. That was our last thing we did on our last night, and that's that was probably, you know, even my even my wife was like, that was that was pretty amazing. Um, uh, I love Disneyland's version of Pirates. Um, I mean, Pirates. It's one of my favorite rides. I love it at Disney World, 
but it's so much better at Disneyland. Um, so I would do that. And, uh, and probably um, Indiana Jones ride. Those were the, the, the three, our three rides that, you know, to me, well, for me was, was my favorite. And I can't wait to do again. Um, and I love the, and uh, Fantasmic. Um, you know, I, it's been years since I've seen Fantasmic in the studios. So um, seeing it there and, Th- those are the things that I can't wait to do again. And and funny enough, we actually left a couple of things on the table that we didn't get to do. Um, so, so you mentioned Fantasmic. So you got to see it since the it, it is reopened, correct? Yes. Okay. So so tell the listeners about that because we're hearing great things about that. For folks like me, you know, I love fan- my, it's actually my wife's favorite thing to see is Fantasmic down at the studios, but. What every person I talk to you say, oh, it's way better at Disneyland. So tell us about that. You know what what makes it better if you think it is, and and what was the new experience like? You know, it's hard because, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen Fantasmic. Um, in fact, I, it was funny because I wasn't even going to go see it because I was like, all right, it's Fantasmic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then reading about it, I was like, all right, I guess we have to do this. And we actually did a one of the dinner the the dinner shows. Uh, and I, I recommend that, so, so, you know, it, so Fantasmic at Disneyland isn't like it is in Hollywood. So it doesn't have its own theater. So you're basically, you're sitting on the floor and like, cause that, and that again, not, not even realizing this when, you know, we give them the, our, our tickets from our show and they're like, it's over here. I'm like, it's, it's here. You know, <laughs> where's the, where's the stadium? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, Oh no, this is it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, and then people are sitting down and I went and talked to somebody, is this the standing show or do you sit? And of course everybody sits and, you know, and, and, you know, it's funny cause we're like, no, people are going to stand once it starts and they don't, they sit, you know, you're, but you're sitting on the ground they're like, okay, this, this works. But the reason why I, I think the dinner show is, you know, getting doing the dinner is because we were able to come up 15 minutes before it start and get good seats if you don't have that or a fast pass, you have to be, well, as you know, you have to be there hour. Like the, people were telling me like a two hours in advance, like oh, I'm not, you know, I'm, that, I could be doing something else. So, um, so we did that. We got really good seats. We, we were right there, right in front of, you know, we we're in the rivers of America um, and they do it on Tom Sawyer's Island. And um, I think maybe that's why people love it so much. It's again, it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of more organic, I guess, maybe. Be, be the, yeah, that's exactly what I was, I was thinking that exact same word. It seems like people just getting together and it just happens, you know, it's not like you're sitting in, uh, you know, row 17, uh, seat six, you know, and uh, here's right, the, exactly. we're going to do the wave now at the Brazilian tour groups, you know, kind of. And, and the, the, the good thing about it too, is right after Fantasmic, five minutes later, the fireworks st- start and um, where we were, we had great, view of the fireworks and their projections. Now we weren't on main street to see them on main street, but you get, you get another. So I was like, all right, this is perfect. So. Now speaking of that, you also earlier mentioned uh, max pass. Did you guys get to, to use that or anything like that? Yeah. So that was something I really wanted to use. I know, I know a lot of local Disneyland people were kind of mixed on it, but then when I start when it came out, I started reading it. Um, we, uh, we decided to go for it, and that, it works great. Um, like I said, I remember the Legacy Fast Pass. I am a fan of um, my Disney experience and, and, and Fast Pass Plus. I know, a lot, I know there's still debate about that. I, I, I do kind of like it, but I think Max Pass is actually a good mix of the two. Um, you know, as soon as we scanned our ticket in, we were able to – I was able to boot up the Disneyland app and pay for it. And a good pro tip <laughs> – is to have your credit card on your app. So it really, it took me not even a minute to sign up for it, hit the three people, you know, my wife, myself, and, and, and my daughter, and we were in. And you really, it's, you know, you make your fast pass there and you, you go, you don't have to run to the, to the ride and, and get the paper ticket and things like that. So we used it each day. Um, and it, you also get the unlimited Disney downloads, uh, the picture downloads there, version of uh, PhotoPass. And um, so to me, it was worth it. It's $10 a day per person, and it, it really was worth it. You know, once you scan your your fast pass for your ride, you're able to immediately make your next fast pass selection right then and there. And you can also 
make your fast pass. Like say if we were like on that first day, we went back to the hotel, you can make them from there as well. So once your time, once your, your time is up for your next one, like I, like the old school where I would set my alarm to go run and get the paper fast pass, set my alarm, get boot on my phone, done, done, done. It really worked. What I will say, and I know some people, this has been an issue. Wi-Fi at Disney World is bad. Wi-Fi at Disneyland is worse. <laughs> so yeah. be prepared if you're going to use MaxPass to use your data. Um, now, for some people that I, it didn't, I didn't see that big of an effect on it, but I just went ahead and said, I'm going to use my data, you know, and it, it works a lot easier than trying to use their Wi-Fi. When we try to do the Wi-Fi, we had all kinds of issues. As soon as I shut my Wi-Fi off at the parks, I had no problem securing, you know, my fast passes. That's a good point. That's a good pro tip. And, you know, speaking of that, because it's been, I can't believe it's been this long now, but I mean, since the rollout of my Disney experience, you know, five, six, I guess years ago now, you know, Wi-Fi was super sketchy down at Walt Disney World. And I found this summer, it wasn't as bad. You know, I think that they're adding more and more hotspots and, right. you know, blanketing the area. And and I'm sure, you know, now D- Disneyland's still in those those infant stages of a rollout of a system like my Disney experience with MaxPass. And so hopefully, you know, if we're talking a year from now, you'll be like, oh, man, the Wi-Fi is much better. Because I think we're all going to have struggles with Wi-Fi. I have struggles with it. You know, when I taught in our district, like, oh, yeah, we got, you know, it's mesh network. It's awesome. Now, no, it isn't. You know, I still have dead spots everywhere. But I think that I think they're going to be forced because you know, the locals are going to have data plans and so are folks in the United States, but you got folks that are international guests that don't want to buy data. True. They want to, you know, they want to use things like this. Hopefully uh, you're, you're a big tech guy. Hopefully this will uh, improve quickly. Yeah, they, they really do. It, it's, it's uh, of my few negatives. That would be probably the top negative is the, the Wi-Fi there. It's really bad. Um, it's a little better in the hotel, but in the parks, I mean, there was just stretches of the park where there's just no Wi-Fi at all. Um, and, you know, of course, in the rides, you expect that stuff when you're going there. I, I, I get that. But we would just be in the middle of Main Street or, you know, like on the back end and just no, no Wi-Fi at all. So, like I said, I, I hopefully that will, you know, that will be fixed, you know, because I think Max Pass, I think maybe not so much for the people that, that are local, but for visiting there. It, it really is. I, I would actually see something like that, you know, if they ever did to get rid of my Disney experience or fast, fast plus, which I don't think they are. It, it definitely, I, I, I kind of, I, I really liked it. So I think it's something that will you know, be, be there for the, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like spending extra money. Don't get me wrong at all, but on a Disney vacation, time is money and convenience is worth something, you know? So you, again, it's one of the things you don't have to purchase it, but I like to also have options. You know, it's like the express bus service that went away, Uh, down at Walt Disney World, you know, that was something I didn't use at all when we were down there for over two weeks. But if I would have wanted to have a four parks in one day uh, adventure, it it was there and I could have taken advantage of it. So I'd appreciated that. So um, as as we close this out, Justin, let's let's talk dining here. You know, we're recording over lunch hour, so I'm getting a little hungry here. So Tango Tango Terrace. So uh, one or two other dining uh, highlights for you. So our uh, our Tuesday day, no, our Wednesday day was pretty much one of the best meal experiences I've had in my my entire life. Because I'm, a bit, you know, we love to eat, and you know, we don't miss too many meals. But you know, we started out. That was our our part, day when we kind of didn't get up early and go. So we started out with breakfast at Steakhouse Fifty Five, um, which um, the chile quiles there are amazing. Um, I, I can't recommend them. I told my wife when we're eating them, it's like, these are one of these, this is one of those meals where in four months from now, I'm going to say, you know what I'm craving right now? The chili quiles from Steakhouse 55. And, you know, cause you know, we've had them in Mexico In Mexico were probably the best, but these were a close second. So that was our breakfast. Um, for lunch on that day, we actually got into, we were, we, we had an acquaintance that was able to get us into uh, club 33. Oh, Wow which was a complete and utter surprise, which made a great vacation even better. Um, and we got to eat there and we got, you know, I got to eat, uh, you know, now, you know, people may laugh, but it was a burger. <laughs> and I know you're going to Club 33, but this burger wasn't like, you know, something you get from McDonald's or Burger King. This thing was amazing. And um, uh, it, it was, it, it was delicious. And the cool, and just a, real quick with Club 33, we were also able to get, 
a whole like a stack of for each day uh, fast passes. So oh, nice. that that made <laughs> you know we didn't we had Max Pass. I already had it, but we didn't really need it after that. But still, it was you know. Um, what and was, then, what was it like? Get, getting to go real quick with Club Thirty Three because I mean, how many people they get to talk to that they go there? I know my buddy William does, but uh, what was it like? I mean, because you appreciate it, you know. Like, there's, there's, I'm sure people that go in and out, like, okay, you know, it's a little, you know, VIP area, you know, whatever. But you know, you get what it's all about. What, what was that like being in there? It's just the best. Way, it's I liken it back to what you're a kid on Christmas Day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what it's like. You're like, you're like I'm, we're sitting out there waiting, and the guy, you know, and you, they they put a the little thing and they ring the doorbell, and it'll, it's they're all nonchalant, and I'm like, I'm like nervous. It's like at the very last second they're going to tell me, no, you can't come here. <laughs> you know, we don't let the riffraff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I get in there and I'm just looking around, and of course, you know, I'm also trying to play it off cool, like, okay, you know, it's like. And then they're like, yes, you can take pictures. So the phone comes out and I was, you know, taking pictures and stuff like that. And, you know, they were going up. Like, we have pictures of everything. And even, you know, like my daughter, we, we got my daughter a pin. And, and we are like, you can trade every pin you have, but this one, you cannot <laughs> trade. Okay, this one has to stay. You know? So, um, yeah, but, you know, we ate at the, 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 in, the, um, in the bar section. I can't remember what it's called. And it's just the attention to detail there is just it, you you can't describe it, you know. And again, uh, you know, my daughter was kind of like, you know, what's so great about this? You know, <laughs> like I, we tried to impress upon her, but even she was she, at the end. She was like, yeah, this is this is pretty cool, <laughs> you know. So, you know, and, but we told my you know my daughter's spoiled because no other trip that we go on, if we ever go yeah. back to Disneyland, is going to be like this. We're probably going to be at a good neighbor. We're probably going to be, you know, so, so you know. But, but yeah, that's why I tell Mallory, you know, most kids don't get to do the things you've gotten to do in your nine years. I didn't even get to go to Disney, you know, World for the first time until I was in, you know, college, except for that one half day we were passing through the Magic Kingdom. So she, yeah, she doesn't get, I mean, I love that I get the opportunity to give her those kind of opportunities, but right. I hope that, uh, I, like your daughter, you know, it, it's hard to appreciate when you're that age, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and we, we say the same thing because, you know, our last couple of trips at Disney World, we've stayed at. You know, Animal Kingdom Lodge with the Savannah View. We we stay at you know the Contemporary. So it's like you know, next time we go, <laughs> we'll get to stay at All Star Music. <laughs> you know? But um, yeah, so but she she kind of got it because even now she'll be like, oh, remember remember this? You know, I'll show her the picture. She goes, yeah, that was a really good, um, you know, a good good photo. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a that's all you can ask for as a parent though when they come to you and say man that was fun you know and they want to look back on it, you're like yes yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and you know we finished that evening off with dinner at Carthay circle um again just amazing food that, that that's the one thing like we we had so much good food you know i had we had beignets we had uh you know dole whip i always get a dole whip it's the same car you know on each coast but you know th things like that but um you know, we, we did the Carthay dinner because after we did the dinner experience for Fantasmic, I immediately booked reservations for the dinner thing for World of Color because it worked out so well. So, and the only one they had was Carthay Circle, which is, you know, the, one of the more pricey restaurants. And I'm like, at this point, what's a couple, what's, what's more? So, but um, yeah, and, and the dinner was just, just amazing. So I, you know, we, I can't think of uh, a meal we didn't, didn't like. I will say, the one thing I thought, not a disappointment, but my, you know, unpopular Disney opinion is that the churro is a bit overrated, which I know, that's, I know a lot of people don't like that, but that's just, you know, that's my, un, that's my one unpopular Disney opinion. So. Oh man, Mallory and I love a good churro. I'm just saying we call them, we call them churros because they cheer us up every time we have a churro. But the thing at Disney, Disneyland is they have, I don't know, 20 different flavors of churro. So... <laughs> Yeah, I just need a churro, you know. I don't, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like hamburgers nowadays. You can't just get a hamburger. So, uh, anyway, well, sounds like, before we go, real quick, just like a quick one tip like, you know, first timer, you went out there, you're like, oh man, if somebody would have told me this, it would have made my life easier. So, is there one tip? Not that I would want to know myself, but uh, what would you tell somebody like me getting ready to go for the first time? And I'll use this tip as coming from a Disney World goer. Don't stress out so much about the planning. 
Um, you can, we were there for three days and we saw, we had everything on my list with the exception of a couple things, but they weren't big, but don't just go with it, but the, the um, and get there early, the, the early morning there, um, even more so that Disney, I mean, getting there, getting early at Disney World is great, but at Disneyland, you can get a lot of stuff knocked out in the first two hours and it's not, not too packed. So, you know, don't stress out and get there, get there at rope drop. And, you know, if you have early, you know, morning hours, get there then. That those are, you know, that we were able to do a lot of stuff, even without fast pass and stuff like that. So. All right. Sounds great. Well, hey, man, it was fun talking to Zan. I appreciate it, Justin. And uh, we'll have to talk again after your next big adventure. So thanks for uh, kicking off the week with us here on the show. Thank you. It was a uh, pleasure to be with you guys. <laughs> All right, don't forget today's episode brought to you by our friends over at the Wisdom of Walt talking about Disneyland. Walt Disney built it himself. You can read the stories. You can get the lessons from Dr. Uh, Dr. Jeff Barnes, the author. You want to get inspired. It's a great time. It's kind of a reset time of the year. Fall's coming on. Grab the book, thewisdomofwalt.com. Drop by Amazon or just go by thewisdomofwalt.com. Pick up your personally signed copy. And also, Justin mentioned touringplans.com. Have an idea. Have a strategy. Stay out of crowds and see the most amount of attractions possible when you head to Disneyland or Walt Disney World or even, oh my gosh, am I going to say it, Universal. <laughs> so drop by today and go over to touringplans.com. Check out all the great trip planning tools they have for your next big vacation. Please do support the show when you shop online. Go to Amazon when you're shopping on Amazon, maybe picking up the Jeff's book. Just go through BeOurGuestPodcast.com slash Amazon. That supports the show very, very much. Every time you shop, it's the same price. You get your prime benefits, everything like that. But it does help support the show. So when you're shopping online, go to BeOurGuestPodcast.com slash Amazon. And give us a follow on the social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at Be Our Guest Mike. And we've got an awesome Facebook group at facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Content there every single day. Lots of live videos. We want you to be a part of the action. So Be Our Guest, uh, sorry, Be Our Guest Podcast on Facebook. All right, we're going to be back again on Wednesday with more of your listener questions. But until then, enjoy the day off. And Lizards, have a great time. I know that the weekend is just about over. Hope you had a great time out at Disneyland for the half. And uh, you know what? This signifies the beginning of the heavy running season. We're getting ready to head into fall. Lots of training for wine and dine and uh, ooh, marathon weekend coming up here soon. Wow. I didn't want to have to think about that today, but I guess I will. So anyway, we're going to get out of here. Have a great Monday. Justin, thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Mike wishing you a great Monday. Time to get back to work or not. Maybe not. And we'll see you real soon. All right, Justin, thanks so much. We're still on Facebook. So Facebook, thank you guys for being there. George is giving us tips in there. Kelly's Kelly's actually in there. She's heading out in, uh, what's it say, 11 days, something like that? I can't see. Eight days. Eight days, man. So, yeah, timely. So thanks, Justin. We appreciate it. No problem. It was, it was fun. It was fun. And uh, I saw your wife in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to. Now, when I get off, she's going to go. <laughs> <more time. laughs> It's all right. I'm I'm used to you know you living in a household of girls. You know how that goes. I totally know. You don't even want to see this look here. I'll show you behind the scenes. There's the, this is the the, the really impressive uh, Be August Podcast Studios. We got oh, Mallory. You're breaking the fourth wall. I don't know if I should see that. I know. I know. There's the Christmas tree back there still that I didn't put away yet. Uh, there's the Coke Zero fridge. Yeah, it's not. I know I shouldn't break the fourth wall, but there it is. I get it. I get this is my little like I get my you know eight square feet of the house to to do the podcast. Yeah, yeah that's you know <laughs> yeah. construction. All my stuff. It all comes in here. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, but uh, I'll talk to you soon. So thanks again. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, take care. All right, we'll see you later. Facebook. Have a great Thursday. We'll be back again tomorrow Friday for the happy hour. Have a good one. <laughs>